thank you for the opportunity to participate. Uh, let me share my screen. I want to talk about um, weight loss in a minute and some sensible approaches to it that I think are going to be very, very helpful. But before I do, there's another topic that I want to touch on, and that's this topic of processed foods. And the reason that I want to touch on it is it's really easy to say processed foods are bad, don't eat them. And so people will talk about all kinds of things that we want to do for health, but people will sort of come back to an easy thing. Let's beat up on processed foods. Don't eat a, a cereal that's processed or something like that. So the question is, what is the most processed food? Is it something like this, like a soda? Or is it some kind of snack food? Or is it a... a some kind of breakfast cereal with all kinds of additives in it, or is it processed meat? Well, I grew up in Fargo, North Dakota, and I took this picture right outside of Fargo. This is corn, as far as the eye can see. And not one of those kernels is going to go to a human being. This is cattle feed or chicken feed or hog feed. But when we think about corn and we think of how corn can be processed, we tend to think of corn flakes, all right, so I'll turn corn into corn flakes. And when I do that, what are the terrible things that happen? Well, let's see now. Um, I might add some sugar, but at the same time, I might add some vitamins um, and some minerals. So maybe it's a mixture of not so good things like adding sugar or some really good things like adding vitamins and minerals. Okay, well, to try to make sense of processing, a Brazilian researcher came up with what they call the NOVA system. And the system said, let's break foods into four categories. Category one is unprocessed foods or minimally processed foods. The apple comes off the tree, you don't do anything to it, you eat it. That's, a, that's an unprocessed food. Uh, processed culinary ingredients was number two. Processed foods was number three. Uh, ultra processed foods was number four. So this was the idea and it sounds kind of sensible at first, um, except when you try to put it to work. Um, let's take a, our bowl of cornflakes. The US dietary guidelines would say, well, that's a grain, that's no big deal. And if maybe half of your grains are processed, that's okay, if they're enriched, even better. The Nova system says, no, 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 that's ultra processed, that's bad. On the other hand, if you take a steak, the US dietary guidelines would say, red meat, hmm, Maybe not your best choice. You might want to avoid that. The Nova system says, wait a minute. It came right out, right out of the cow. It's not processed. Um, what the heck? Go ahead and have it. That's got to be healthy. So as you can imagine, this caused all kinds of problems. And uh, when politics entered, it became a really big thing. Uh, Senator Roger Marshall uh, was on a Future of Health Summit, and he said, there's nothing wrong with red meat. The problem is processed meats. So everyone thought you could say meat's okay, cheese is okay, all these unhealthy things are okay, um, as long as we point the finger of blame only at processed foods. Okay, well, let me submit. There are mechanical factories where you smash corn into corn flakes, mechanical process. There are chemical factories where you ferment something to make beer or something like that. Um, and I would say there are also biological factories, and here it is. Farmers buy little chicks and the chicks go into a shed and they are the machine. Corn is fed to the chicken and out comes eggs or corn is fed to the chicken and out comes meat. So the point I'm making is it's funny to think of it this way, but the animal is used as a biological factory to convert feed into a product that is worth more than what went into it. Okay. So if it sounds funny to talk about biological factories, well, it shouldn't. Yeast are living organisms and yeast are used to make wine, bread, beer, bacteria. They're living too. And bacteria are used to make sauerkraut, kimchi, okay? Uh, molds are even used, uh, aspergillus molds. These are used to make miso or to make soy, uh, soy sauce um, or to make sake. So living organisms are used all the time, specifically as factories, they're bought and sold just like machinery. And so some cases it's a little bit strange. You know what these are? These are coffee cherries. Coffee doesn't come 
from the coffee tree in, in cups. Uh, coffee comes from a coffee cherry. And if you looked inside there, you'd see a little coffee bean. But there are people who take these animals. This is an Asian palm civet. And they feed coffee cherries to the civets. It goes through the digestive tract and comes out in their poop. And the coffee beans that come out in civet poop, I'm not making this up, are viewed as sort of a boutique item. And it's sold as Luwak coffee. Yes, that is, <laughs> that's civet feces with all the coffee beans in it. And it doesn't make for a better cup of coffee, but it does make for a higher price. Or you can take corn, and instead of just selling corn, what you can do is you can take this biological factory and you can stuff the corn in. Corn mash goes in and out comes foie gras. What you're doing is you're transforming the corn into fatty liver. Foie gras is just literally French for fatty liver. Um, and it uh, commands quite a high price, particularly in France around holiday time. So let's walk through it. Am I right in saying this is a factory? Well, the saliva of the chicken comes in contact with the corn. The saliva contains amylase, which is an enzyme, <clears throat> which breaks apart the starch in the corn into glucose molecules. And the corn can go into the crop where it's just sort of a waiting area. The crop will hold the corn for a while. And then when time the time is right, um, it goes into the proventriculus, which is basically the stomach. The gizzard will, um, hold rocks, as you know, and, and act sort of like teeth to tear apart the food. Then you start going to the small intestine, starting with the duodenum, and then in the large intestine. And in the intestinal tracts, what happens? The nutrients are absorbed so that the amino acids can be broken apart from the protein that, they can, that contain them and turned into muscle or other things. Uh, once we get through to the small uh, once we get through to the large intestine, the large intestine separates out the fiber, separates out the water, and you're left with other products. Well, what did this machine do? First thing is this machine altered the proteins. As you know, proteins are chains of amino acids. And corn doesn't have animal protein in it. It's corn is a plant has plant protein. When the when the chicken consumes the plant protein, all those amino acids break apart and they produce animal protein. And that animal protein is different. It's a different amino acid sequence. Does this matter? Well, researchers at Harvard University said, yeah, I think it does matter. They tracked a large group of people, more than 100,000 people from the nurses' health study and the health professionals' follow-up study. 